are very excited to have the red breast, how old is this, 28 year old dream cask expression here. This is an Irish whiskey produced at Middleton Distillery, which is enormous. This one is classified as a single pot still whiskey. So what does that mean, Jack? So single pot still, the, the production of it is very similar to how single malt is made. Okay. Um, so it's pot still as the name would suggest, yep. but instead of using 100% malted barley, they'll use malted barley plus unmalted barley mm. and a proportion of other grains as well, typically rye and oats, um, up to a maximum of 5% though. So it is mostly malted barley and unmalted barley. So that'll okay. give much different character. Okay. The whiskey so we'll have a similar malt. kind of depth to single malt whiskey, but maybe a bit bit lighter. Would you say? No, any... they're typically they're typically a bit more oily in character, mm, okay. um, and a little bit more biscuity and, and grainy in character, sure. as you'd imagine you'd get from the the unmalted proportion of the the grain bill there. Yep. Um, but you still get some of that fruitiness and, and, cool. and maltiness that you would from the malted barley. Beautiful. So this particular expression is from the uh, Dream Cask series. Uh, by Redbreast. This was originally intended to be a one-off. They had one cask. I thought this is dreamlike. Let's keep this as a dream cask. It's now turned into an annual thing. Um, however, they do stipulate that if it's quality dependent. So if they have one year and there's not a cask, it's up to scratch, they'll just, just skip it. Um, so this particular one is the third expression um, in the series, 28 years old, and the whiskey has had some time in an export cask as well. So, um, and are they all? They're not always twenty-eight years old. Not always twenty. They're always got a decent age. It's uh, been a thirty-two-year-old and maybe a twenty-seven as well. And are they always single cask? Uh, are usually a combination of several casks. Okay. Um, maybe a handful of casks. Yeah. So they are quite limited. Hugely popular. They sell out straight away. Um, and as the name suggests, always dreamlike in terms of, of quality. So let's crack this open, Jack, and have a little taste. See what we've got. Thank you. Beautiful, rich color. Yeah, lovely color. Um, obviously, it's had you know quarter of a century in wood. Um, picked up a lovely color. Plus that. Port as well. The port influence will be obvious straight away. I find mm -hmm. what you say, it's like a pinkish hue you yeah, get from yeah. the port. Um, obviously from sherry casks, it's typically Oloroso or Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. So you get that sort of mahogany colour. But for port, you get this lovely sort of pinkish reddish um, tinge to it, which is beautiful. Um, let's move on to nosing. That's, yeah, it takes you back, doesn't it? It's, mm. it's very... I'd say sweet is the main thing for me. Um, anything jumping It's just out so clean. different from mm. most other things I've, I've nosed. Yeah, I'd say it's it's weird. It's like a contrast between the depth and the mellowness you get with a whiskey of this age, but the vibrancy of port cask whiskeys, yeah, yeah, which yeah. are often a little bit younger and maybe a bit more a bit more lively. So it's I'd say the two brought together. Red currenty, jammy. Mm. character to it yeah no absolutely it's got some of those berry notes to it it's absolutely beautiful um so let's give it a little taste and see if the palette matches up slange slange mm. i think it's delicious it's lovely i thought the nose was exceptional and i think that raised my expectations perhaps a little bit too high mm-hmm on the palate, it is everything you'd expect, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't blow me away in the way that I was perhaps expecting no, it to. No, I'm getting a lot more raw woody notes mm. from it than I was from the, the, the berries on the nose. Yep. This one is bottled at 51.5%, so it has got a fair bit of heat to mm -hmm. it. Um, I think the poor influence in the ageing does kind of overshadow that a little bit. It does taste quite smooth. It does go down very easily. Mm -hmm. um, for you, would you say this is a, is typical of an Irish whiskey in terms of character? Um, no, because it's a, mm. a pot still, mm, um, so yeah. it wouldn't be uh, the typical product that the rest of Ireland is producing. Um, I wouldn't say it was very reminiscent of a pot still either, actually. Mm, it's not okay. particularly waxy, oily in yeah. character. Um, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was more like a single malt either, though. It's, yeah, it's, it's different. A, it's definitely a different. An anomaly. I think yeah. Irish whiskey, for me, is 
oh, almost famous for being very easy to drink. Yeah. See, most of it is triple distilled, so like sort of Jameson's and you know these sorts of huge international brands. They're very smooth, you know, a little bit of sweetness to it, um, but very gentle around the edges. Oh, this okay. has a lot more character to it, a lot more depth to it. It's much more interesting, I would yeah, say, yeah, than yeah. Oh, your you know supermarket Irish whiskies. Yeah. Um, it's not an introductory dram. Not no, I'd say it's a very much a special occasion mm -hmm. Irish whiskey, but again, it's it's a lovely one for beginners. I would say it's not too demanding, it's not too much of anything, um, it's lots of nice little interesting elements yeah, to it which yeah. are brought together quite nicely. Yeah, but yeah, I agree. No, it's a lovely drop, and hopefully one we can revisit soon.